Good morning. Welcome to Tuesday, and welcome to our devotional time together. This week we are working on the subject of patience, which is something that uh, probably uh, more people react to <laughs> than anything else. I swear, you know, if you if you preach a sermon on patience, people will always, uh, oh man, this is I really needed that, you know, and. And uh, it, it's a fascinating thing. I think we all understand that we need, you know, to demonstrate more patience. But uh, the other side of the coin is that uh, you got to be careful if you're praying that God will teach you patience. Because it generally is a really tough lesson for us to learn. We are very prone to be impatient. And, uh, and waiting on God is not our strong suit. Uh, we we want to take care of it ourselves, and we want to get it taken care of right away. Oftentimes, the only the only way that we'll give it over to God is if we have failed wretchedly and painfully, and uh, and even then we're impatient with God to get it taken care of. Uh, but it is uh, an imperative for us to uh, to learn about patience. So we're going to explore that a little more this morning. I um, would ask you to keep a number of folks in prayer. I have a number of things that just recently have come up. Um, Alan Wright, some of you know Alan, um, uh, died this morning early, as I understand it. And um, uh, I was quite shocked. Um, he was in uh, nursing care. And I, uh, well, anyway, I was, I was quite shocked and moved. So uh, please be in prayer for the girls and, and, uh, and everyone who knew and loved Alan, um, wonderful guy, just a just a sweet man. So um, keep the family in prayer, and then a couple of unnamed concerns that are are uh, quite important. And and so I'd ask you to uh, lift those up. God knows exactly who and what and all of the circumstances far better than we do. And uh, so I would ask you to do that. Let's, uh, let us then begin our time together with uh, our invocation. O oh God, prepare us through the active presence of your Spirit to come before you in a worthy way and to ask of you correctly. Enlighten our understanding, purify our every desire, quicken our wills into instant obedience to thy word. Strengthen every right purpose. Direct this hour of worship to the magnifying of your name and to the enduring good of us, your children and servants. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Uh, the scripture this morning that we're going to work off of is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 35 to 40. Luke 12, 35 to 40. And this is a series of parables that uh, Jesus is teaching. Um, and uh, just a, a few, the parable of the rich fool, uh, and then a, a, a parable about worrying, which we are not to do. And then this parable uh, on watchfulness. So hear the words of Christ as he taught the disciples and in turn teaches us. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. I remember... Um, years and years ago, uh, a situation that, um, and, and it was like, as soon as I read this, it popped right into my head. Um, I had been out hunting 
it was deer season and I had been out all day and my, um, my mom, my sisters and Kathy and the kids had gone to a, uh, someone else's home and, uh, locked the door. And, uh, I did not have any way of getting back into the house. I came out. It was by the time I got to the house, it was quite dark and it was really bitter cold. And, um, uh, I, my keys to my car were in the house and, uh, <clears throat> I was not a happy camper. Um, it, it was, uh, it was not the best moment in my life. I'll put it that way. And probably my reaction was not the best in my life. Um, I couldn't find anybody around, um, uh, home. Uh, it was it just it was a weird situation. I mean, it was like people that I would have gone to and started calling around to see if I could find out where they were, and uh, <clears throat> I. But everybody was uh, was not there, and so I <clears throat> girded my loins, and I started walking. I walked down to Fillmore from my mom's house in Hume to someone who I knew had a key to our house, and. Uh, <clears throat> got there and I opened the uh, uh, door when I got back I walked down I walked back um, it, it's about there's no great feat of you know human endurance um, <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah there were moments when I would have liked to have died and just had that hanging over everyone's heads you know oh we shouldn't have locked the door they never locked the door at that point. I mean, why they locked the door, it absolutely uh, floored me. Uh, and, and you know, they had gone, as I said, and uh, to do some crafts and have a good time. And I was out there having a good time hunting, but I was frozen. It was cold. And I got back to the house and let myself in and started a fire. And uh, I was really, really angry. Um, I have rarely been that angry and it was not a good, uh, it was not a good moment in my life. Not, not good as a, I tried to cover it up for the kids sake cause they were little, but I don't think I did a real good job. You know, um, when there is green oozing pus of anger rolling out of your ears and you know, just, it was nasty. Um, and that's what <laughs> this passage brought back to my mind. And, uh, and so I thought about it a little bit. And, uh, and I thought about how realistically I was very impatient. Now, I'd been sitting out all day, basically motionless, in a temperature that was within, you know, a few degrees of what it was at that point. And I'd done that for my own sake and my own purposes and had a really good time and got home and everything wasn't where I anticipated that it would be. My ideas were not met. My plan was not successful. My goals were not, you know, there was absolutely no way I was going to do that. Uh, I was going to accomplish my goals, which was uh, I expected to get back to the house. I expected that there would be a fire in the fireplace. I expected that supper would be ready. And, uh, and all those things. And, and I don't mean, you know, that everybody else had to serve me. Uh, really, that wasn't it. It was just like, no, no note on the door. I found a note inside. Obviously, they thought I would have my key. I don't know why they would have thought that I would have had my key to the house. Um, it was sitting on the dining room table with, uh, you know, with some other keys. Uh, I remember that clearly. And uh, the, the, there were a couple routes by which you could get into the house normally. And, uh, and there was no physical way I could uh, do that. Um, and, uh, and those routes do not exist anymore. So, But anyway, um, everything about my plan failed. You know, everything I anticipated did not come to fruition. Um, it was not just that it didn't come to fruition, 
But everything that I'd anticipated, which was going to be for my comfort and my joy, was denied me. And, uh, and I was angry, you know. And did it, did it come eventually? Yeah, it came eventually, sure. You know, uh, I, I built a fire myself. I cooked some food myself. And they got home and everybody's like, well, you didn't have to cook. We were coming back. <laughs> not, and, and it was not, that was not well received on my part. I'm just saying, you know. Um, and so my belly was full and uh, my body was warm. And, uh, and it's a wonder I didn't, you know, turn it into spring in the town of Hume just from my heat emanating from my body from my anger, you know. I was impatient. I wanted what I wanted right now. <clears throat> and I held everybody else responsible for that, for meeting my need or my desires, really. Obviously, I survived it, right? You know, I walked to Fillmore, got the key, walked home, opened the door, got inside, and uh, so I, I, sur I didn't just survive in point of fact, I thrived, all right? I got the fire going, got some food going for myself, and, uh, you know, and it, it was, a it was not a, it was not a good time, but I, I, you know, again, in retrospect, thinking back, it's like that, that was a time, Jamie, when your lack of patience, um, your unreasonable lack of patience was really damaging, um, in many respects. Cause I didn't, I, not only did I not care who knew I was angry, I wanted to make sure everybody knew that I was angry. I, again, did not want to let let it explode in front of the kids, but why in the world would you lock the door? You never lock the door. Well, why didn't you have your key? Because I'm out in the woods. I don't want to reach in my pocket for something else and pull a key out and have it drop in the snow and then never find it again. You know, I mean, I had answers for all of the, well, why didn't you, you know? And uh, uh, so, you know, it was one of those things where I just rejected everybody else and was totally focused on my desires. And, and you know, they were okay. I mean, you know, if the door's never locked, why would you expect it to be locked? Um, if you left your keys on the dining room table where they were in plain view, why would anyone think that you had them with you? <laughs> you know, um, it, all these all these things... And, uh, but it was in the transition that uh, everything went wrong. And, um, and I was forced to do some things that I didn't want to do. And it was not terribly comfortable, again, walking all that distance. So, you know, you can look at that and you can say, okay, so, um, you know, my impatience uh, for, uh, through the delay of gratification process, you know, was immense. And, uh, and it colored my life for several days. And so you look at you look at this, and, uh, and, and you know, and Jesus is speaking to the servants. Okay, now there's, there's maybe the first clue in Jamie's reality. Um, he is speaking to the servants who are waiting for the master to return. Oh, that would be me, apparently. Uh, in my mind, and uh, and he and he says to them, um, "You must always be ready." Now, if they had uh, if they had stayed and waited for me to show up, they never would have gone up. The kids wouldn't have had a good experience. It was they were for those who know the folks involved. It was uh, they were up at Lyle and Glad Hotchkisses working on some crafts. And if you've ever worked at Lyle and Glad's. Uh, with glad on crafts, you know that that's an experience you would not want to miss. And uh, and I have to admit that I was probably as angry that nobody was there to greet me and uh, and care for my needs as I was that nobody was there and the door was locked. I mean, it was, you know, <laughs> if you take those 50-50 and then add another 75 on top for having to walk to Fillmore and back, you're probably about where I was. And... Uh, so, you know, as I, as I looked at that and I read this passage and I was thinking about it, it was like, yeah, Jamie, you know, uh, you, you sort of saw everybody else as your servant. And, uh, and so, um, 
you know, there's a problem with that. There really is. It's a big problem. It's not, and it's not a good thing. It doesn't reflect well on me. But how often have things like that, maybe not that graphic, but how often have things like that happened in your life where your expectations were not met and you became enraged? Uh, I was pretty enraged. I had calmed down some by the time everybody got home and I was warm and, and eating food. Um, but, uh, you know, when has that happened? And, <clears throat> you know, if you're not patient with other people, um, you know, why, uh, why would you expect them to be patiently waiting there for you? And yet Jesus says, you know, <clears throat> you, this is the kind of waiting that you must do for me. Now, I'm not Jesus, so they didn't need to wait around for me. It would have been nice if they hadn't locked the door, but they didn't need to wait around for me. I'm not Christ. But um, if my if my anger at not finding anybody there waiting for me, prepared, with a door open, and that's what he's, he knows exactly what he's talking about here. He says, Master of the house gets there, door's locked, he can't get in, nobody will let him in because they're all asleep or you know they're out doing something. Uh, thinking, well, he won't be home till you know late. Um, you know, he's going to be mad. And uh, and then he really likens it to as he explains the uh, you know the 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 format of the parable to the disciples. He's saying, you know, I'm coming. I'm going to be coming back. You are the servants. You had better be prepared when I come back. Don't sit there unprepared. And, uh, and and I think for me, uh, again, as I as I was working through this and thinking about it, and again, it just man, it just hammered me that memory. I think it was sort of like showing me that Jesus would have a real right to be angry, if that's if that's the word, um, to come back and find his people are not patiently, preparedly waiting for him. And and I think that is our call. You know, and as we go through these days, which are difficult, and a lot of people are likening them to, you know, the end days and, and the tribulation and all that stuff. And, uh, and I, whatever you do, don't think that Jamie is saying, and all that stuff means it's not going to be a big deal. It is. Uh, I think it's going to be such a big deal that what we're experiencing right now is going to be diminished to nothing in comparison. Okay. Um, and that's the truth. I really do believe that. But um, we need to be doing as much as possible the preparatory work for the Lord's return. So that we can take as many people with us as possible. And when I say that, I don't mean, <laughs> you know, uh, take as many with me as I can. Anything like that. I want to take as many people with me to heaven as I can. I want to I want to have some joyful responsibility for the fact that some people know the Lord and are waiting patiently. And it does take patience. You know, uh again, this is not a this is not a fair comparison because I was you know, I I I was wrong in my anger. However, um Nobody in the house was thinking about me when they locked the door and left. And, and I kept hearing the phrase, well, I didn't think, I didn't think, I didn't think, you know. And uh, so nobody was thinking of me when they left to go off and do what they did. And, uh, and again, under those circumstances, absolutely. But what if it was Jesus and nobody gave any thought his coming and, and I think and I, I really mean this um, I, I was not justified in the anger that I felt but Jesus would be you know as, as we are his servants and we are his friends and we are his family and we are his body we ought to consistently be ready we don't know when he's coming back but he is coming back, for sure. And ultimately, isn't that the, the bottom ultimate bottom line of patience? 
be, being ready for that, being prepared for that, being waiting, anticipating joyfully uh, the return of Christ, even in the midst of the horror of what is going to be a part of all that. Um, shouldn't there be an expectation and, uh, and an excitement about that very reality? And uh, the greatest patience uh, exhibited in the human race has, has been waiting for Christ to return. And that pretty much solely exists in the Christian community. If we are servants of Christ, then we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. We need to, to be attentive. We need to wait patiently. And in the meantime... Do the things that servants do. What what are the servants of Christ supposed to do? Well, go into all the world and, you know, preach the gospel to every living creature. Call people into relationship with Jesus Christ. That's demonstrating your patience as you're waiting because it's like one more day, maybe one more person. One more morning devotion right now because that's kind of where the limitations are. One more hope. One more promise of Christ in the midst of, uh, you know, the, uh, the horror of what's going on around us. Some days you don't even see any horror and other days, boy, it's there. So patience, patience, waiting for Jesus to come back, waiting by the door with your hand on the latch. I'd have been a lot happier that night if there have been somebody waiting by the door with their hand on the latch, I want to promise you. And, uh, and I think that uh, Jesus will find great joy in those who uh, are waiting with their hand on the latch patiently. It's, um, in the meantime, we do the things that we do. You know, Why? Because we are servants of Christ. So... Uh, you know, this isn't an excuse to just sit around and do nothing. This is a reason to make preparations, to be certain that we are here, ready and able to welcome Christ. Hard days, hard subject, hard lesson for us to learn. Patience is one of the most difficult uh, things for human beings to acquire. My grandmother used to have a saying, patience is a virtue, catch it if you can. Seldom found in women, never found in man. And, uh, and of course, we used to argue about that, uh, my sisters and I, and I would, of course, switch some of that around, but that was a saying and probably the more correct one. And, um, you know, we, uh, we only gain ultimate patience as we experience the patience of waiting for Christ to return. And uh, so I, you know, that's the ultimate patience. There are daily moments of patience that we have to live with and we have to deal with. Um, you know, the old saying, and I think I said this yesterday, um, don't, be careful if you pray for patience because you may get it, you know. And that's, uh, that is the truth. But there are few things that will bless us ultimately as much as patience. As we find ourselves waiting patiently for the Lord's return, ready for him, um, one of the things that that does in us is it develops patience as we work with people, as we converse with people, as we attempt to bring people to the Lord. Um, you know, that, that time frame, uh, it's, uh, it is not our time frame. It is Christ's time frame. We plant seeds. Jesus cultivates and creates the harvest. And sometimes we get to see that. But patience says, I'm going to plant a seed today, and I expect it to grow. And God will do with it what he will do with it. So um, all of those things spring out of this foundational patience for the return of Christ. And it's only Tuesday this week, so we're going to talk about patience a whole lot more. But that's Jamie's confessional for the day. Uh, and uh, But also, it, it is worth thinking about from the standpoint of, are you ready to receive Christ? Are you ready to receive his return? Are you ready for that? 
And are you patiently waiting if it's 100 years from now and doesn't occur in your lifetime? Are you willing? Are you ready? Are you patiently waiting? That's our call. Um, that is our life in Christ. And, uh, and as we learn it and live it, things get better. They definitely do. And our trust increases with our patience. So, live today in Christ's presence, remembering he is near, and he will sustain you as you serve in his name. Amen. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I will be doing, I will, I'm sorry, there will be no Bible study tomorrow night, okay? Um, and, uh, but I will be doing the uh, devotional in the morning, okay? So, uh, hopefully we will see you then. Thanks. Bye-bye.